Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a crocodile sock or booty or however you want to do it. This one's a little thicker so it may classify more as booty, but you can make it into a sock. And basically, um, I'm going to show you how to make the sock part, but it's entirely up to you. You can use a slew of different techniques. You don't have to do what I do. Um, you don't have to do the toe that I do. Um, you can do a drawstring cast on rather than a kitchener, but most people like the kitchener. I'm doing a um, kiss heel, okay, and I'm doing a brioche stitch up through here to give this kind of texture. Okay, so, but if you don't want to do this, you can just make you a sock and get you up to a certain point, and then um, you can come back in here um, to learn how to do the cuff because the cuff is a challenge. All right, this is not a simple pattern. This is kind of an advanced pattern, okay? Now, I have my universal sock loom in a 3 8 inch gauge set to 16 stitches. You can do this with the flexi loom. Um, if you so desire, okay, so you, you can, um, but I personally, you'll have to do up to 36, I think it is, rather than 40. So we're going to do a Kitchener cast on, and I like working on the very edge, okay. So, just back and forth. and back. You can do a drawstring cast on if you would like. Um, that's not a problem. Okay, if you want to do it that way. Alright. Okay. So, you do your Kitchener cast on your 16 stitches. And then you toss your loops over like you normally would. Because trust me, if you're trying to do this pattern, you should have done other socks before now. So that this isn't so much of a scratch your head kind of thing. Okay. So we're starting out with 16. We're moving up to 40 stitches. Make sure you get the whole thing over. Because if you don't, it won't tighten like it should. Okay. Once we get our Kitchener cast on taken care of, then you want to go in and knit a row. And then every other row will be an increase. Your toes should get done fairly fast. kitchen or cast on. At this point, we want to knit a row. After we knit a row, we're going to want to increase. Okay, now there are multiple ways of increasing. I do my method just because I find it's absolutely no holes. Other people do a method and they say that they don't get holes, so whatever increase works for you, but this increase I find works. 
works best for me personally. Okay. is going to be, so this is a two row set kind of thing, and you're going to knit a row is your first thing, then you're going to increase, okay, and I'll show you how to do that. See one below it, but you'll see that top loop. You want to pull that back. Okay. But because of how we're increasing, we need to go ahead and get that. Okay. Yeah. This is how we're going to increase. We're going to find that top stitch. Gonna grab it and you're gonna pull it over. Don't release it. Now take your working yarn and put it in front of the peg and then place that stitch back. What you've just done is created a stitch. You've just done an increase. So what you want to do is halfway move that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to knit your way over. this side. You're going to find that first stitch, which is right there. And then pull it back. Then you put that working yarn in front of the peg. And then you're going to place that back. You're going to pick up that stitch you just made and you're going to move it here. And you're going to toss that bottom of the cover. You're going to knit the next peg. This is classified as a wedge increase, okay? You're going to grab that top stitch again. You're going to pull it back. The working yarn in front, and then place it back. Pick up that stitch you just made. And you know you made the stitch because the working yarn moves. Once you do that, you're just going to tighten now, my suggestion is, once you've gotten there, you just tighten your stitches up. Then you're going to knit your way over. And then you want to do your last increase. Okay. Let you grab that top one. Pull it back. Place the working yarn in front. And then place it back. Pick up the stitch you just made. Just make the stitch when it moves and put it on the next available peg. Go ahead and finish it moving it all the way out. And snug up. And knit. Now, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to knit all the way around and then you're going to increase the next row. Knit all the way around and then increase. 
You want to continue this process until you have a total of 40 kegs. You started out with 16, okay? So now we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we have 20. The next one will be 24, okay? So you have the process. So keep going until you have a total of 40 pegs. Now if you need help figuring out where 40 pegs is, you may want to put a little stitch marker here. Um, but we're increasing out to 40 pegs. Now, if you're wanting to do this on the flexi loom with your increases and the skinny, you'll want to do 36 because the gauge works up bigger on your swatches with the um, pegs being bigger for the flexi loom. Okay, so if you're doing the flexi loom, it's increase up to 36 with this increase up to 40. So knit your way around then do the increase row, knit your way around, and then do the increase row. So follow what I just did over and over until you have a total of 40 stitches. Okay, as you can see, I have increased out to 40 stitches. There's my Kitchener cast on there. Okay, so to explain where we're at, we have completed this much. Now I need to complete this much through here. And I'm going to be showing you a type of brioche stitch. The eye of partridge stitch. It's a reinforcement stitch, okay? And um, the amount of rows is very dependent on what size you are making. You're going to be doing 52 rows. If you're doing it normal, it should be about 40. If you're not going to do the eye of partridge, but um, the eye of partridge adds a little extra dimension to it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be doing 52 rows. All right. Let's pull that down here. And it's a four row repeat. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to slip that first one in front. So you're going to yarn over or slip in front, see? So you're just not going to bother with it. You're going to slip it in front. Then you're going to knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit. Slip, knit. Now, this is the first row of a four row repeat. So you slip knit all the way around. Okay, pause the video, get that much done. Okay, now that that's done, what you want to do is you want to knit both the yarn over slip and the bottom stitch over. So you want to knit the two stitches over. At this point, what you're going to do is knit, knit two stitches over. video. Do that all the way around. That's row two of a four row set. Okay. 
Next, what you want to do is you want to knit over that first one, then slip it in front or yarn over in front, then knit, yarn over, knit, slip or yarn over, knit, slip or yarn over. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way around, and that is row three of a four row repeat, and you'll notice we're staggering that. Okay, now I have worked my way around. I'm going to knit and knit the two together. Knit, knit the two together. Knit, knit the two together. Okay, now that is row four of a four row repeat. You want to repeat those four rows over and over again for a total of 13 times or a total of 52 rows. If you do not want to do this stitch, then I suggest you do 40 rows. That slipping or yarn over that you do is what kind of tightens it and shortens it so that you aren't getting um, the length on the rows. And so if you're not wanting to do this, you just want to do regular rows, do only 40, okay? And that should do you. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, complete your 52 rows um, of the Eye Partridge stitch, or 13 sets of the four row repeat. Or if you're just going to knit your way around, knit 40 rows, okay? Okay, I have completed my foot area and next we'll be working on the heel and I like to keep it really simple divide the loom in half this way um, I know some people like to make it a little cockeyed I generally don't like to do that so um, we're going to divide it in half right down the middle right here we're going to do a kiss heel and I'm going to show you how that works. So what you want to do is you want to knit your way over to here. Um, but you're going to stop just before that peg. Okay. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to put your working yarn in the middle. You want to grab the previous stitch. You want to pull it back. Do not release it. Put the working yarn in front. Then you're going to knit your way over to here and then do the same thing on that side. This is still a short row technique. You can do a regular short row heel, you can do a double wedge heel, but I am going to do a kiss heel. Then you're going to pull back that stitch, pull the working yarn in front, and replace it. Then you're going to knit your way over to here and stop and do the same thing there. I'm going to show you two more times, and you're going to have a total of six, I believe, um, twin knits. So it's just like doing a short row heel, you divide it into thirds, all right, and you're just going to do twin knits. So you knit your way over, working yarn in the middle, pull that back, wrap, place it back. Do the same thing. You knit your way over to here and do the same thing. You want to pause the video 
and do a total of six twin knits on each side. So you should have had 12 twin knits total on both sides. So go ahead and pause the video and complete that much and then we'll come back. Okay. So you should have a twin knit. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> it's hard to tell, but you can see I have two stitches there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two stitches. Two, 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 two. Okay. And I did my last one over here, and then I knitted my way and stopped right at that last. Twin knit. Okay. So, here's how it works. You want to go in and You want to go in and um, you want to knit your way around, but what I might suggest you do <coughs> is knit the two together on that first twin knit. Okay. And put a stitch marker. And the reason being is you're going to be doing your twin knit kind of backwards on the second round after you knit your way around. Okay. And that's where your starting point is. You always want to know where that is. You'll do the same thing over here when you get around here. So, as you can see, there's a two stitches there. Two stitches there. Two stitches there. Two stitches there. And one more two stitches. And we're going to keep up with our stitch patterning that we're doing. And so you're going to Slip that first stitch and knit the next stitch. Slip, knit, slip, knit. If you want to call it a yarn over, you can call it a yarn over. Slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, slip, knit, and slip. Then you go back to just knitting like normal. You knit the two stitches over there. Then you knit the two stitches over here. And the two stitches here. And the two stitches here. Here. And your last one here. When you do the last one, I'm going to suggest you a stitch marker there. Trust me, it's helpful. Okay, now what we want to do to finish up this heel is you want to Knit your way over to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you want to bring back twin knit. Okay, and you're going to slip 
and knit your way back the other direction. And you may be saying, well, I should have two stitches set back there. You just need to bring one over. Okay, it doesn't have to be both. You just bring one over. Just like that. Yeah. Place back. Okay. Then you slip and knit back the other direction. Then you knit those two together. One, two. Then you know you do this with the next one. Just pull over one. Place it in the front. to the other one. So you're slowly increasing in towards the outside. Okay. So you're doing the reverse, but you're still doing the same twin knit stitch. Okay. Here's your twin knit stitch. Working yarn in the middle. Pull the stitch back front and place it back. At this point, what you want to do is pause the video and continue. So I'm going to knit my way over, knit the two together, and do a twin knit stitch. And you're going to do this all the way out to the one you started with on the last decrease. So you should have six that you do. Okay. So what this means is there I do, knit two together. Come back here, pull the top stitch back, place it in front. And then you slip and work your way over, knit, and then you do a twin knit. You're going to keep going back and forth until you, um, naturally this one will be twin knit at first, and then this one will be the last one. And you do the last one, you're going to knit your way over and knit the two together over here. That is where I will come back in the video. So pause the video, continue to increase out, then knit your way over, knit the two together, then I'll pick up and we should finish the heel up and be starting um, the cuff area next. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, I have completed my heel section and just need to get myself back around. And so at this point, you'll just knit your way around, knitting the two stitches over when necessary. Okay, so you're just going to knit your way back around to your starting point. And then what you want to do is this four row repeat here. You want to go right back to it for the most part. And you've got to get yourself back to the starting point, but um, you'll end up doing your four row repeat again um, for four times. So that's 16 rows. 
All right, but you need to finish up your set that you have going on here, which is not difficult to get started. This is row two of the four row set. Because we are on the second row of the four row set, the way you keep up with that. What you're going to do to get started, you're going to start on row three, slip, and yarn over and in, yarn over and in. You know the process. Okay, so finish up this set and then do four more sets like this down here. And that means we are to here. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting to here on our sock. So once you finish this, what we'll be doing is you'll be knitting for seven rows and then you're going to turn it inside out. All right. So pause the video, complete um, the set you're on and then complete four sets of the eye of partridge stitch. Okay, and then we come back, I'll tell you that you'll need to knit for seven rows if you feel comfortable with that. Four sets, knit for seven rows. But we're getting close to where we need to flip the sock inside out. Okay, so pause the video, get that much done. Okay, <clears throat> now I did my four sets, and now what you want to do is you want to knit or seven rows then you'll need 40 stitch markers or safety pins or something to be able to put your stitches on um, because we're going to be flipping this inside out okay let's go ahead and pause the video and complete your seven rows of knit and then we'll be ready to do the next step, which is the more complicated step. Okay, I finished my seven rows, and to kind of save some time on the filming, what I've done, as you can see, is added a stitch marker to um, every single stitch. Every single stitch. And because the new crocodile stitch version the stitch pattern is done on the inside of the loom, you have to flip your sock inside out. So what you want to do is just take all the stitches off once you do this. Pull it through the top. Like this. Now, my suggestion for you uh, go in and reattach it, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and do your kitchener. Okay. So you find your first loop, and you want to find your second loop, and you want to tug and figure out which way it's going. You can go back up to the top. 
We're down to the bottom of the next loop. If you've gone with this before, it's like going up and down a mountain, or it's like a heartbeat monitor. It goes up and it goes down. When you pull it, it goes up. Pull from the top more, and go to the next one, and you pull from the bottom more. Always gently tug before you do it if you're not sure. It's always a fun challenge on these last ones to find that last one to pull before pulling it. What you want to do is you want to go in and turn the sock inside out. Alright. Now, here's how this works. Find your starting string. you want to send it through the same way you pulled it out. You just send it through the top. Okay. Now you want to add your stitches back. So what you want to start with and that back. stitches back to the loom and you want to make sure that you don't twist the stitch and you'll know if it's twisted. Not that it will really matter because you're probably not going to really see the stitch but you really don't want to twist it. Okay. Make sure you don't skip any. Because if you do, you'd be shuffling all of those stitches around. Okay, I have now officially reattached the sock to the loom. At this point, what you'll want to do is go in and take out all your stitch markers now. 
and then we'll be ready to start our crocodile stitch. So go ahead and pause the video and take out all your stitch markers. Okay, now I am officially ready to start my crocodile stitch. Um, I'm going to show you how to do one to get you started and then um, you just repeat the same thing over and over again all the way around. Okay, so when you're doing the crocodile stitch, this one's going to have a 16 row repeat. Okay, and on this sock, I did this one, two, three, four, so I did two sets. All right, and as you can see, there's some simple knits in between so that you aren't having to overlap and overlap it. Okay. So here's how this works. You're going to skip that first stitch. And what you want to do is you want to do not touch these down here. You're going to e-wrap, cast on six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now it's up to you. You can seed stitch it back and forth for seven rows, or you can garter stitch. Now I garter stitch. So I'm going to knit my way back. Again, I am not touching these stitches down here. You mess with those stitches, you screw your whole sock up. You've worked very hard to get up to this point. Okay, next, I'm going to purl. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap around that previous stitch. You can go ahead and knit it over. And then you want to take and get you some extra. And you're going to pull it through purl lines and create a loop. Okay. Then you're going to go in and pull it through purl lines through every single one. Don't touch these stitches down here. Okay. Now that you've done that, hold the loop. Okay, you can hold the loop. Take those stitches off. Then you're going to and there you see you have a scale okay then you're going to toss that bottom loop over and then you're going to knit two Okay, and that is your repeat basically. I'll start the next and then leave you to it. Now, instead of skipping, which we did over here, you're going to knit it. Then you're going to cast on those six. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. Okay. Then you start doing your scale again. So you start repeating just what you did over here. All right. The only difference is you knit instead of skip. So you're going to wrap around that one. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and get your scale done all the way around. Okay. And because you're using up four stitches in order to create the scaling pattern, you're going to have approximately, you're going to have, you should have 10 scales total when you finish. Okay, all the way around. And when you get to these corners, you can just extend back and forth here rather than having to go back and forth through here because you're just going to take them off and put them over here. All right, that's just an easier way to do it um, when you're trying to go around those corners. So you can just extend it back and forth, back and forth over here. If you're doing a scale, and then you just transfer it back over here, and it saves you from having to bother with doing the corner. Okay? So pause the video, get your scale row done, and then we'll be ready to um, do the next section. Okay, when you complete your first row, of scales. The next thing to do is to knit seven rows, which is right through here. And you see it looks like a pearl. If you look on the inside, there's your knit. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and pause the video and you want to knit for seven rows. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and get that much done and then we will move on to the second row of scales and mostly what I'm doing is showing you how to offset your scales and you continue the same process that you just did. Okay, to offset your scale, you want to knit two. Okay. <clears throat> Then you want to knit one and then e-wrap cast on six. Right. And what you've just done is I've thrown your scales so they sit in between each other nice and neatly. Okay. And that's what you want. You want them to sit in between the previous row. Like scales normally do. Okay. You're going to purl your way back. You're going to do this for seven rows. Knit one way, purl the other way. Seven rows. I'll show you the scale again in case you missed out doing it the first time. Okay, this is row seven. You're going to wrap the next peg, toss the bottom loop over, and then you're going to through and pull it through pull it through pull it through pull it through and pull it through and then you're going to take 
take the loop she created off. And then you're going to on six. Okay? So you repeat over and over all the way around. You should have ten scales. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to knit seven rows. Okay? Now you can do more or less of these if you want. I did um, five rows of uh, scale. So once you complete this row of scale, you're going to knit your seven rows. Then you go back to this first one and do your scales. And then you're going to knit seven rows. And then you're going to do this second scale here. Okay, so you're going to do the second scale row, which is what we just did. Okay, when you finish that one, you're going to come back to the video. And we'll be ready to finish off with a garter stitch edge so it doesn't curl at the very top. Okay, and then we will be almost done. So go ahead and pause the video, complete this row, then knit for seven rows, come back to this first scale, and do this row here, knit seven rows, do your second scale, which is here, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish up the cuff. Okay? So we're actually almost done. Pause the video, get that much done. Okay, we have finished the last scale. And at this point, you're wanting to do a girder or seat stitch for four or five rows. Okay? So, um, seat stitch, knit one, purl one, all the way around. This video go all the way around. Okay, that's the first row of a two row repeat. This time on your first stitch, you're going to purl one, knit one. that all the way around. You're going to do that two row repeat for either four or five rows. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, we're almost done. We're ready to our bind off. I'm going to do a modified bind off that allows for stretch. So you need one and two. Take the first stitch back, place it on the, take the second stitch back, place it on the first peg, that's the bottom of my paper. Then you're going to knit pegs one and two. Second stitch back to the first peg. I'll spot them right over. Knit 
page one and two. Take the second stitch back, toss the loop over. You're going to repeat this all the way around, and then you're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is what it should look like. You turn it right side out, and it should look like this. Okay. You will, of course, weave in your ends, and you are done. That is how you make a dragon booty.